the North Korea does not pursue or adopt the unilateral nuclear uh, strategy, uh, you know, and then it would be better for China uh, if the North Korea, you know, consult with uh, the China on uh, their the nuclear test and also missile test and also the it's an, its uh, policy toward uh, the uh, United States. So uh, against this uh, backdrop, I think that. Uh, the China may want North Korea to uh, think the catalyze, you know, maybe they depend on uh, the China strategically, and the, maybe uh, the catalyzing China uh, for the North Korea uh, the interest rather than you know adopting the unilateral the nuclear strategy, which may be uh, much riskier uh, than uh, before. Uh, so. And second, uh, regarding uh, the North Korea's response to the South Korean Yoon Suk Yeol government, uh, the policy towards North Korea, uh, maybe I think that everyone, most of the people in this room, <laughs> are not really optimistic. Uh, I may I should not say the pessimistic, but uh, the, I still should say that it's not really. Uh, the optimistic, uh, you know, that uh, you already uh, read that the uh, the Kim Jong Un sister Kim Yo Jong's you know response to the South Korean government uh, statement, especially the President Yoon Suk Yeol's you know uh, North Korean policy. Uh, the guy I think that North Korea uh, came to the negotiation table in the early 2018, starting with the Pyeongchang you know Winter Olympic Games, and then also they you know. Uh, participated in the three inter-Korean uh, the summit meeting and also the two U.S. North Korean summit meeting between Trump and Kim Jong Un. And the reason for North Korea's you know coming back to the negotiation table at that time was that uh, North Korea uh, uh, you know believed that that they completed the nuclear deterrence capability against the United States uh, in late uh, 2017. And then at that time, it seems to me that Kim Jong-un uh, believed that United States you know, might you know, concede somewhat. And maybe as much as Kim Jong-un wants in the inter, uh, the, I, I'm sorry, the US uh, North Korean summit meeting. So that's why uh, the Kim Jong-un decided to meet with uh, the US President Trump twice. But the thing is that after at, at the Hanoi meeting, uh, I mean the Singapore uh, sub meeting was quite okay and uh, somewhat uh, satisfactory to the North Korean side. But the Hanoi meeting was you know a disaster, and then uh, Kim Jong Un was really disappointed. And then uh, they he I think that he realized that uh, he cannot persuade the United States to concede uh, and uh, the. Try. It's really difficult to get compromise, you know, as much compromise as possible from the United States. And then uh, he came back to the previous uh, the nuclear policy in uh, the before the 2018. So, uh, so now we are, you know, faced with uh, the 2017, you know, very dire situation uh, now. So uh, that's why I think that North Korea is not likely. Uh, really not likely to respond uh, the, to the South Korea's uh, the policy uh, uh, in, in the near future. And the three, uh, I think there are three challenges still. The first uh, one is that, just as I mentioned, that North Korea's you know, reluctance to cooperate with South Korea and the United States uh, the, at the time. The second is that the U.S., you know, by the administrations, you know, the another uh, the foreign policy, North Korea policy of strategic uh, patience, like the the Obama's, you know, strategic patience policy, uh, because Biden administration is too busy to, you know, deal with North Korean uh, issue. Now, and third is as you uh, know, and as I mentioned, that the the emerging, you know, the the bilateral and the conflicting uh, international relations, uh, not only between the U.S. and China, but also between you know, the Western side and also the Russian and Chinese, the authoritarian side, that all, you know, gives a really critical impact on the North Korean uh, issues. And it would be really difficult for uh, us to see 
the North Korea to come back to the negotiation uh, ta table in the future. But still, uh, we need to make every effort to, uh, you know, be coming up with a new approach and a very creative, you know, approach how to, you know, the persuade the North Korea to come back to the negotiation table, starting with some kind of soft issue like the uh, the vaccine or the humanitarian you know aid is something uh, like that okay thank you uh, the Biden administration is not likely to change its policy to North Korea unless North Korea you know changes its policy policy first and then the problem is that North Korea is not likely it's really reluctant to uh, change its policy and still you know, the maintaining its hardline policy uh, and then uh, refusing to talk with the U.S. and uh, South Korea. But still, the problem is that there is some uh, precondition on uh, the denuclearization uh, talk and that North Korea is not likely to, you know, accept those uh, preconditions. That's the problem. Of course, the main problem comes from North Korea, but still, I think that the U.S. Uh, policy has some, you know, unsatisfactory factory, you know, point here, you know, uh, North Korea's uh, strategy is now is the, to buy time, you know, for its the development of, uh, you know, further, you know, nuclear uh, capability, including the tactical nuclear weapons and also new uh, nuclear, uh, the developing new, new nuclear uh, strategy. So who decided, uh, I think, I mean, that the, the time is on whose side, actually, uh, that's the uh, problem. So maybe the Biden administration is that the time is on the U.S. side, uh, but it seems to me that the Kim Jong Un uh, believes that the time is on the North Korean uh, the side. So, so there is uh, <clears throat> no room for the, both the United States and North Korea to you know compromise on that uh, point. Uh, but the thing is that we cannot just uh, let it go like this because you know. Uh, by the, uh, I'm sorry, the Bush administration, you know, uh, didn't have, you know, the specific North Korea uh, policy. The Obama administration, uh, you know, adopted the so-called strategic patience, you know, uh, you know, doing nothing actually uh, about uh, North Korea. And then uh, at that, during that, that time, North Korea, you know, had, you know, uh, the secured you know, enough time to develop its own nuclear uh, weapons and that, that the, that the result was that there are five, you know, I mean, six nuclear uh, tests until uh, 20, uh, the uh, 17, and then the development of the, you know, in, intercontinental ICBM class, you know, uh, the rocket uh, system. So we cannot just uh, let uh, the North Korea go in this way, and uh, we need to do uh, whatever it is, you know, we need to do something about to, you know, uh, stop North Korea's you know further development of nuclear uh, capabilities. But the thing is that what is trouble is that the, the Biden administration is also you know uh, it seems to me that Biden administration is also adopting the strategic patience maybe stress, strategic patience policy 2.0, and then it's uh, doing nothing about uh, North Korea just waiting for the North Korea to change its its own course of action, which is not really, you know, uh, likely. So uh, that's why, you know, we are really pessimistic about the, you know, future, the North Korean uh, nuclear uh, talks. Uh, so, so really, you know, troubling. So uh, both the U.S. and South Korea, uh, and also in the, you know, North Korea, you know, should do something to come up with, uh, you know, better approach to uh, this issue because uh, it's really important, you know, or the Korean uh, Peninsula to resolve these, you know, current current deadlock and uh, try to resolve uh, the uh, these uh, issue uh, in the future. And I think the time is not on the neither side. Actually, the crisis is nuclear crisis is not, you know. Uh, the helpful really to not only to uh, the U.S. and South Korea, but also to the uh, North Korea. The nature of the uh, is uh, no uh, is regime. Uh, I don't say the regime change. I say the nature of the uh, regime. But it takes time to 
you know, for North Korea to change its nature of the uh, its uh, the regime. Uh, but you know, uh, it is really uh, important for the outsiders, you know, the other countries to you know capitalize North Korea to on its behalf uh, to change uh, the its course of action, its course of you know its foreign. Uh, policy, as you know, that Rome was not built in a day. Then North Korea can change, but North Korea cannot be changed in just a day. So it uh, takes time. It's always, you know, uh, it's really difficult. It's pessimistic, but uh, it's really difficult for us to make, you know, every effort to come up with a new approach and try to, you know, attract North Korea to, you know, come back to the negotiation table and then try to. You know, think again about their national strategy and the alternative route to their, you know, survival and uh, the prosperity in the northern side of North Korea, and eventually, you know, thinking about the unification on the Korean Peninsula. The of U.S.-China, uh, the cooperation on the North Korean issue, I think that the windows of opportunity is very quickly closing. Uh, you know, maybe yeah, as you know that may, maybe mainly due to the Russian uh, the uh, invasion of Ukraine and all the Taiwan issue, and also the emerging uh, you know the new Cold War style international uh, relations you know bipolar like the bipolar system like the international uh, orders. But I believe that uh, still the Chinese role is really uh, important, and then. What I think is that how to persuade China to, uh, you know, to help North Korea uh, to realize the, you know, the the as I said, the illusion of the their the, its own their own nuclear uh, deterrence, you know, uh, that capability. And then I think that China would be much happier uh, if the North Korea does not pursue or adopt the unilateral nuclear. Uh, strategy, uh, you know, and then it would be better for China uh, if the North Korea, you know, consult with uh, the China on uh, their the nuclear test and also missile test and also the it's, an, it's uh, policy toward uh, the uh, United States. So uh, against this uh, backdrop, I think that uh, the China may want North Korea to. Uh, I think the catalyze, you know, maybe they depend on uh, the China strategically, and the, maybe uh, the catalyzing China uh, for the North Korea uh, the inches rather than you know adopting the unilateral the nuclear strategy, which may be uh, much riskier uh, than uh, before. Uh, so, and second uh, regarding. Uh, the North Korea's response to the South Korean Yoon Suk Yeol government, uh, the policy towards North Korea, uh, maybe I think that everyone, most of the people in this room, <laughs> are not really optimistic. Uh, I may I should not say the pessimistic, but uh, the, I still should say that it's not really uh, the optimistic. Uh, you know that. Uh, you already uh, read that the uh, the Kim Jong Un sister Kim Yo Jong's you know response to the South Korean government uh, statement, especially the President Yoon Suk Yeol's you know uh, North Korean policy, uh, the guideline. Uh, uh, the thing is that North Korea, you know, seems to me North Korea has decided to uh, model through all these difficulties at least for you know several uh, years since the early. Uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, you know, uh, I think that North Korea uh, came to the negotiation table in the early 2018, starting with the Pyeongchang, you know, Winter Olympic Games, and then also they, you know, uh, participated in the three inter-Korean uh, the summit meeting and also the two U.S. North Korean summit meeting between Trump and Kim Jong Un, 